Hello, good afternoon, everyone. A pleasant afternoon once again, and welcome to physics class. I hope everybody is fine and very energetic to learn new things this afternoon. Actually, our topic this afternoon is just connected of what we had just talked about last time. Still connected to solving, of course. So, to start with, this afternoon, our objectives are, so, we are going to derive and use the equations of uniformly accelerated motion. The next is, we are going to describe a method for determining the acceleration due to gravity or denoted as G. So to start, let's have a review first. Last time we talked about equations of motion. And in equations of motion class, we have this equation one, which is V is equal to U plus AT. And then equation two, we have it S is equal to U plus V all over two times T. And equation three is S is equal to UT plus one half a t squared and equation four is v squared is equal to u squared plus two a s and of course the um, the quantities are the s there in the equation um it refers to displacement your u there is the initial velocity your v is your final velocity and your a is acceleration and t is your time so now, another thing also that I mentioned last time, that we talked about last time, rather, these equations, the four equations that we have there on the screen, or in equations of motion, these can only be used first when we are for motion in a straight line. Again, this equation can only be used for motion in straight line. Another thing also is you can only use this one for an object with constant acceleration. So we have to remember the two things that the conditions for using these equations of these equations of motion. So now uh, another thing also that we talked about last time is of course we just ended up by giving this um, homework. I gave this homework to other class, to the other class rather. So question number three, how do, how do we solve it again? So we have here the problem. The cyclist in figure 2.15 is traveling at 15 meter per second. She breaks so that she doesn't collide with the wall. So calculate the magnitude of her deceleration. So the first thing that we are going to do here of course, we have to analyze the problem. After analyzing the problem, we have to know what we know, identify what we know. So what we know here based on the given illustration and given, we have here your initial velocity, which is 15 meter per second. And also we have your, of course, your V, your initial velocity is zero meter per second. And of course, your displacement, we have it 18 meters. So after that, after identifying what we want to know, we have to uh, write also or identify what we want to know or what we are looking for in this given problem. So now uh, we are looking for your A, which is your acceleration or the deceleration. So expect or we are expecting rather that we have a negative acceleration based also on the illustration and the given. So this is what we are looking for for your A. So for a while. Okay, so next is of course we have to, uh, we have to decide what equation, what equations of motion that we can use. Again, the clue is we have to just recognize the given. Our, our equation that we're going to use 
it's based on the given that we have. So the equation based on the given that we can use here, since we are looking for your A or your deceleration, then we can use equation V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS, as you can see there. And of course, based off from the equation that we have here, we're going to rearrange it in order to look for or to derive a formula in order to use to get the magnitude of deceleration, which is your A. So next, we have it. We derive that A is equal to V squared minus U squared all over 2S. So next is we have to substitute the given that we have. As you can see, your V here is 15. That's why we have uh, V squared minus U squared all over 2S. Again, your V squared, we can rewrite it as 0 squared minus 15 squared all over 2 times 18. So after that, after we substitute that given class, what we have now is we will just solve it and simplify. Then you have it negative 225 over 36. So, so next is um, we have to uh, solve it. Then after solving it class, we already have the, after, the we, after we calculate rather, then it gives us an answer of A or our acceleration is negative 6.25 meter per second squared by dividing negative 225 by 36. And that gives us A is equal to negative 6.25 meter per second squared. That means our acceleration is negative. So our answer is correct since we are looking for the magnitude of deceleration, which is now negative 6.25 meter per second squared. So I hope you will be able to remember about what we had just talked about last time and even to memorize the formula about equations of motion. So I guess you are all ready to face our new topic this afternoon. So our topic this afternoon, as what you just read in the objectives, is we're going to compute for acceleration in a uniform motion. And if we have time, we can also proceed to a uniform motion. But before anything else, let's define first, yeah, let's define first class. What is a uniform motion? I know some, uh, uh, most of you here have already encountered this uniform motion. So what is uniform motion as a recall? Anyone? So when we say uniform motion class, it implies the movement. Again, it implies the movement of a body along a straight line with steady speed. So I highlight the word steady speed. Another thing also, Uniform motion covers equal distance in equal time interval. In short, there is an equal distance in equal time interval for uniform motion. Another thing also under uniform motion that we need to remember, it is similar to actual speed of the object. So it is similar to actual speed of the object. Another thing also in a distance time graph, Uniform motion shows a straight line. So do not forget that one. Another thing also under uniform motion class, it has a zero acceleration. So I hope you'll be able to remember about uniform motion. How is uniform motion differ from non-uniform motion? So let's define what are or what is non-uniform motion. So now, your non-uniform motion class, it alludes to the movement of an object along a straight line with variable speed. So it's not constant anymore, the speed in here, but it is already in a variable speed, meaning to say it will change its speed. So next is 
it covers an unequal distance in equal time interval. Unlike in a uniform motion, there is an equal distance. But in non-uniform motion class, there is an equal distance. So I highlight or I underline the word unequal. Next is uh, under non-uniform motion, it is different or yeah, it is different from actual speed of the object. Unlike in a uniform motion, it has a similar actual speed. So they are so in non-uniform motion, it ha it is different from actual speed of the object. Okay, another thing also under non-uniform motion, which is very um, easy to remember about its concept, the distance or when we look at the distance time graph of a non-uniform motion, it will show us a curved line. So again, the distance time graph shows a curved line under non-uniform motion. Unlike in a uniform motion, it is a straight line. But in a non-uniform motion, the distance time graph shows a curved line. So they are really different from each other. Another thing also is the non-uniform motion has a non-zero acceleration. Unlike in a uniform motion, it has a zero acceleration. So in here, it has non-zero acceleration. I hope everybody still uh, follow or can still follow. So now let's try to describe or compare the uniform and non-uniform motion based on their graphs. So under uniform motion class, we have the distance, the relationship of the distance and time. As you can see, how will you describe it? Yeah, very good. Distance remains constant with time based on its uh, example graph or sample graph under uniform motion. Okay, next is this one. Under uniform motion, we will also encounter this graph. Or this is an example, or this graph is an example of a, of a uniform motion. So how will you describe the distance and time in there? Okay, equal distance is covered in equal intervals of time. So the two graphs there, they represent or they are examples of uniform or graphs of uniform motion. So now, next is we will try to uh, describe the graph of a non-uniform motion. So under non-uniform motion, let's see or let's try to compare the graph. So we have the distance and time based on what have you observed. Yeah, you can see a curved line compared to a uniform motion. It's just a straight line. So that's one of their difference. Remember, a while ago, we defined it. So based on that graph under non-uniform motion, an equal distance is covered in equal intervals of time. So this shows... For this example, this shows an increasing non-uniform motion. So again, that graph shows an increasing non-uniform motion. Now let's proceed to the next, the other one, okay? So we have it, the distance and time. What have you observed with the graph under non-uniform motion based on this graph? Hmm? What, can, what can you observe? What have you observed rather? So you can say that it is or it has an unequal distance is covered in equal intervals of time. That means or the graph shows a decreasing non-uniform motion. So I hope you will be able to uh, recognize or identify or even to differentiate between the difference of the two about the uniform uh, and non-uniform motion graph. So I hope you can compare, you can differentiate now. So another thing also, let's try to describe the gradient of the graphs of a uh, uniform and not uniform or ununiform um, motion or non-uniform motion rather. So let's see. 
Okay, based on the graph there for the displacement and time graph, you can see that the gradient of graph is equal to zero. Again, the graph shows, uh, the gradient in the graph shows that it has a gradient of zero, which is equal to zero. Hence, the velocity is equal to zero. So the object means is at rest based on that first graph. So the describing its gradient of the graph. So this is an example of a uniform motion graph. Another thing also, you know that this is an example of a uniform motion graph, the second graph. So let's try to describe the gradient of this graph in the uniform motion. So gradient graph or gradient of graph is constant. So the object is, it means that the object is moving with the uniform velocity. So that is how we describe the gradient of the graph of the second illustration or the second graph shows that the gradient of the graph is constant. And it means that the object is moving with a uniform velocity. Okay, correct. So now the last graph that you we have here, the third, is it shows a curved line. So again, this one, or if we're going to describe the gradient of this graph, since it is a curved line, of course, that is or that belongs to non-uniform motion. So what can you say or what can you describe or how will you describe rather about the gradient of the graph of the third? which is under non-uniform motion. So the gradient, as you can see there, the gradient of graph varies. So that means that the object is moving with non-uniform velocity. So that is the meaning, or that's how we describe the gradient of the graph of the non-uniform motion, which is the curved line. Okay, so now let's proceed. Okay, so I hope you can all follow. Are you still okay? So I hope you're all okay. Okay, now, I want you to describe the picture. What have you observed in the picture? Something is trying to, what? Trying to drop a stone perhaps on the cliff. So this shows about something to do with our topic this afternoon which is in acceleration due to gravity. But in acceleration due to gravity, we have to consider the term free fall based on the illustration that you can see there. So what is a free fall class? So to describe a free fall, we can say that a free falling object is an object that is falling under the sole influence of gravity and that is a free fall. Another thing also to describe a free fall class, it is any object that is being acted upon only by the force of gravity is said to be in state of free fall. So it's very obvious there on the illustration that is an example of a free fall. So there are two important things that we need to remember about the motion characteristics that are true of free falling objects. So what are these important motion characteristics for free falling objects? First is always remember class that free falling objects do not encounter air resistance. Again, free falling objects do not encounter air resistance. The second one is all free falling objects on earth accelerate downwards at a rate of 9.8 meter per second squared, or it is approximated, or sometimes we approximate it into 10 meter per second squared for back of the envelope uh, calculations, or shall I say another, uh, we approximate sometimes the value of 9.8 meter per second squared as 10 meter per second squared. So, I hope you can uh, remember the, the acceleration due to gravity, as you can see, 9.8 meter per second squared. So next, gravity. 
aside from free fall, we have to define what is gravity. So what is gravity class? We all know that gravity will affect the free falling objects. So this is a force that all masses have. So meaning the bigger the mass, the more gravity there is. So remember that one. Another thing also, gravity is, this is why Earth has a much higher gravity than the moon. So that means that the Earth is much, because the Earth is much bigger than the moon. So another thing also under gravity, it is the force of gravity causes objects to accelerate towards the center of the Earth. And also, this or under gravity, this acceleration occurs at approximately 9.8 meter per second squared downward. This number will change depending on how close or far away you are from the Earth's center. So that is gravity. So now we can say or we can define that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second squared down. So acceleration due to gravity will reach 9.8 meter per second squared when air resistance is zero. This never actually happens. But when we do questions, we assume that it is possible actually. So as you can see, as you observe how free falls happen or how is acceleration due to gravity occurs. So let's start with T when, when, when the time is zero second, of course the velocity or initial velocity will start at zero meter per second. So what have you observed? As the time increases, the gravity or the acceleration also increases until it will reach from 49 at 249 point meter per second. So that is how we describe a free fall of object considering that we will start it or our initial velocity is zero meter per second. So now another. I want you to think about this one, the big misconception. Questions are often asked, doesn't a more massive object accelerate at a greater rate than a less massive object? Wouldn't an elephant free fall faster than a mouse? This question is reasonable. Inquiry that is probably based in part upon personal observations made of falling objects in the physical world. So now, what is now the answer of the question? So this is the answer. Acceleration of an object is directly proportional. So I will highlight the word directly, proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. So again, acceleration of an object is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. So increasing force tends to increase acceleration. Again, increasing force tends to increase acceleration, while increasing mass will decrease acceleration because they are inversely proportional. Therefore, we can say that the greater force on more massive objects is offset by the inverse influence of greater mass. So subsequently, all objects free fall at the same rate of acceleration. Do not forget that one, that all objects free fall at the same rate of acceleration regardless of their mass. So do not forget that concept. Another important concept also, we can say that or we can sum it up with this, or let's say it again, so it is crystal clear or clear to us. All objects free fall at the same rate of acceleration, regardless of their mass. Again, all objects free fall at the same rate of acceleration, regardless of their mass. So now, this represents a graph, a position time graphs, 
of a free pong. So as you can see, it starts low, it finishes with a large downward negative velocity. So as you can see in the graph. Another also, another graph to represent a free fall by velocity time graphs. This shows that the, okay, that the graph starts from rest, which is or which has an initial velocity of zero meter per second. And then the slope is negative 9.8 meter per second squared because it goes downward. The graph shows downward. So let's have an example about solving something related to the problem or to the topic, acceleration due to gravity. Let's have this problem. An egg falls off a table. The floor is 0 0.8 meter from the table top. Calculate the time taken to reach the ground. Calculate, then calculate the velocity of impact with the ground. So the first question is we have to calculate the time taken to reach the ground. So to solve for your letter A in, the, in example number one, calculate the time taken to reach the ground. So the first step that we're going to do here is we should list what we know. So what we know here, based on the given, we have your initial velocity, which is zero meter per second, and your displacement, which is 0 0.8 meter, and your A, which is your acceleration due to gravity, which is given 9.8 meter per second squared. So what we want to know in this given problem is to look for your time taken or your T. So this is what we are looking for. Then step number two, decide what equation to be used. So based on the given, we can use the equation of motion, which is S is equal to UT plus one half AT squared. And since our initial velocity or your u is equal to zero, therefore, our equation now becomes s is equal to one half a t squared. Then we can rearrange this. We can rearrange the this one, the equation. Then we have now, and that gives us what? That gives us t is equal to square root of two s over a. Then just substitute the given. So your S is 0 0.8. That's why we have 0 0.8 in here. And then divide it by 9.8. Then that gives us square root of 0 0.16. 2 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.16. Divide it by 9.8. That gives us square root of 0 0.1633. So I hope you can follow. Then step three, calculate then. Step number three is you have to calculate the square root of 0 0.1633, and that gives us t is equal to approximately 40 seconds, a point 40 seconds rather. This one, so after that, get the solve the square root of 0 0.1633, and that gives us t is approximately 0 0.40 seconds. So I hope you can follow. Okay, you can double check that one. Okay, next. We will try, we'll now solve for letter B. Your B is to calculate the same given, calculate the velocity of impact with the ground. So what we know based a uh, while ago, given we have U equals zero meter per second, S is 0 0.8 meters, a meter rather, and A is 9.8 meter per second squared. Then what we know here, or what we want to know here is your V. Your V is now the equation that can be used. We have V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. So we can just substitute the given to the equation. In here, V is equal to the square root of, okay, just substitute the given in this equation that I encircled. So you can just have it now. 0 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.8. Then the square root of 15.68 uh, rather will give us an approximate uh, 4.0 meter per second. So after the calculation will give us the answer as the value of our V is approximately 4.0 meter per second. I hope you can all follow. So I want you to try this one last example. We don't have much time. 
So a steel bolt from rest through a height of 2.10 meters, an electronic timer records a time of 0 0.67 seconds for the fall. So calculate the average acceleration of the ball as it falls. So what we know, U is 0 meter per second, your S is 2.10 meters, and then your time taken is 0 0.67 seconds. So what we want to know is to find your A, or your, your average acceleration. So the equation that we can have, your V, your, um, your average speed is equal to S over T, where S is your displacement and T as your time. This is your equation one. Your equation two is average acceleration, which is equal to V minus U all over T. So we use equation one by substituting the given to the equation. Again, the purpose of equation one is to find your final velocity so that we can use the second equation or the, yeah, the second equation to find the average acceleration. So first, we have to look for, for we have to look first for your average speed by applying or using equation one. So here is your equation one. S over T, where S is, where S is, 2.10 meters, and then your, uh, your, uh, what we call that your T is your time, which is 0 0.67 seconds. So when you divide it, that gives you 3.134 meter per second. So what's the next step after getting the average speed? We can now find your final velocity so that we can find your average acceleration. So remember, to find your final velocity, we all know that the average velocity is equal to u plus v all over 2, as you can see in the equation, remember? Then next, we will arrange it. We will cross-multiply it. This one, this, this equation, then that gives us 2v. 2v, 2 times v is equal to u plus v so next that gives us to find your final velocity then we can use 2v minus u this one so after that we can substitute so we have it uh therefore your final velocity is 6.28 meter per second as you can see this one this is your final velocity. So we can now uh, use the average acceleration formula, which is the equation two. We can use equation two already to find your average acceleration. So to find it, then we can have it, A is equal to V minus U all over T, where your final velocity is 6.268 meter per second, divide it by 0 0.67, then that gives you your A as 9.355 meter per second squared. Or you can just rewrite it as A, or the average acceleration of the ball as it falls is approximately 9.4 meter per second squared. So that's it. So I hope you'll be able to uh, grasp the concept about acceleration due to gravity. I am giving you now the time to do your activity, okay? So I hope you'll be able to finish your activity today. So have a good day, everyone. Thank you for listening and participating. Thank you so much. I'll just be here to wait for your queries. If you have some questions or clarifications, you can just approach me. Do not be hesitant to come over here in front. Thank you.